Isabel and welcome to Meepo Village. Today we're going to be playing adventure number two in The Legend of Drizzt and I'm going to be mixing a hero from the Wrath of a Shardalon. So join me at the table and let's play The Legend of Drizzt. All right guys, I have the game almost set up. Not quite, but I did do a few things, but I wanted to go over the setup with you so you guys can see how adventure number two gets set up. Um, but I will tell you that I'm going to be doing a two-player game, and like I said, in this game I'm going to be bringing a hero from Wrath of Ashardalon, because uh, you can mix a match. You can bring, uh, actually people bring heroes and even monsters and tiles from other adventure games into this one. Um, this game takes a lot of space, especially with cards. Uh, all of your attacks are in uh, designed as cards, and uh, there's a lot of them. And uh, I I'm not sure if I'll be able to show everything on screen, but I'll do my best to try um, and show you as much as I can all the time. Uh, but just so you know, I have my two heroes up here. Uh, Tarek is the hero that comes from Wrath of Ashardalon, and uh, Cadbury is a hero from Legend of Drizzt. Uh, now uh, let's go to the adventure book and let's look at how to set up the game so we can do it together. Okay, so this is Adventure 2, Search for Mithril Hall. The ancestral home of Clan Battlehammer is within reach and our objective is to seek the door that leads into Mithril Hall. It's a 2-5 to five, uh, hero adventure. I've chosen to play with two because there's no room for anything else. And then there's a list of suggested heroes, and I've already played with Drizzt in our last run through. So I just picked Cat Caddy Bree, uh, which is one of the suggested suggested heroes here. Now let's look at the setup. Special components in this adventure: the start tile, the broken door tile, the ancient throne tile, the crown token, and then our villain is Artemis Entreri, <laughs> and we need his card and his figure. So I have all of that already. Then, what do we do first? Place the start tile on the table. Place each hero on any square of the tile. Let's do that. So I have the start tile here on the table. We can place our heroes anywhere we want. Obviously, it looks like they came down uh, this ladder. Um, do we want to stay together? We probably want to stay together, uh, although we do want to explore. Um, so I'm guessing, I mean, it doesn't matter at the beginning of the game, they both can move and probably will move twice. <laughs> so they'll reach um, an edge of the tile, but I'm just going to put them right there in the middle together. Uh, and let's go from there. What's next? Next up, take the broken door tile from the cavern tile stack and set it aside. Shuffle the rest of the cavern tile stack and then take three tiles from it. Shuffle the broken door tile into those tiles. Then without looking, put the shuffle, broken door, and three tiles after the eighth tile. Okay, so here's my uh, broken door tile. This is this the rest of my cavern tile stack. We're going to give it a shuffle. Um, though they were pretty shuffled even before I started, but just in case, give it a good shuffle one more time. And then I take three tiles, the top three tiles, one, two, three. And I take the broken door and then I shuffle all these tiles together so that I don't know when exactly the broken door is coming. I know it's coming, but I know I don't know if um, you know if it's gonna be the top of these tiles or at the bottom or in the middle or somewhere in between, which yeah, I mentioned everything. Anyways, uh, so now we count eight tiles down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's where we put those three and then stack all these these eight ones on top. So we know for eight tiles the broken door is not going to show up. But then after the eighth tile it might be the first tile that we see or it might be the, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh or the twelfth. One of those. Um, but that's that. So let's see what else. So for our starting awards we get two healing surges for this adventure and each hero draws one random item card from the treasure deck. Okay, so I have my two healing surges here. Um, I might have to take them off camera if the, the dungeon gets to be too much, but for now I'm going to keep them there so you guys see that we still have two healing surges. Now it says everybody gets an item. Uh, let's go ahead and shuffle this. Um, actually, let's shuffle all of them. 
little bit. There's our encounters. And I'm not playing with the advanced cards yet. According to the rules, uh, Adventures 1 through 4 uh, do not play with the advanced cards. Then after uh, Adventure 5, we add the advanced cards, which add, um, I guess, more difficult, more difficult encounters. Uh, I guess it's once you get used to the game um, and there's a little more variety. Uh, with those added cards. But for now, we're going to go with this. Okay, and then for Tarak, well, let's see if it's an item, because it has to be an item. And it is. It's a potion of healing. Um, so, you know, that one just heals him. Uh, we'll keep it over here. And then for Katy Bree, she gets... This is not uh, an item. This is a fortune. So let's pick again. Uh, another potion of healing. Okay, so and then this one I'm just gonna shuffle it back So everybody has a little bit of healing, which is great because in this game. It's healing is not easy Okay Let's see what's next. All right, so we've done all the adventures set up. There are some special adventure uh, rules Broken door. When a hero reveals the broken door tile, do the following. So all of this we're gonna do when we reveal the broken door So I don't want to spoil it now Let's go to victory. The heroes win the adventure when they defeat Artemis and Dreary, and, the, and any hero has the crown token. So I'm sure once we find that uh, broken door tile, we're going to find the, to the crown token as well. And then defeat. The heroes lose the adventure if any hero has zero hit points at the start of his or her turn, and there are no healing surges tokens remaining. Which is, you know, basically how we lose almost all of the adventures, at least that I know of. And then, when you start the adventure, read. Following a clue found in an ancient tower near the city of Silvery Moon, you have journeyed deep into the Underdark in search of the ancestral home of the Battlehammer clan. Your travels have led you to an ancient cavern near the entry to the Dwarven Citadel. Brenner's search for Mithra Hall is nearly at an end. Meanwhile, the dreaded assassin Artemis Entreri has been given a job. This villain is hunting down Regis for his crimes against Pasha Puk the leader of a dangerous thieves guild in the city of Kalimport. It is only a matter of time before Artemis tracks reaches down. So I'm not sure what beef this uh, Artemis has with us because Brunner is not with us, but I guess we have been sent by him to collect this crown token. Um, he was one of the heroes that were suggested in the adventure uh, book, but uh, we didn't pick him. <laughs> we went with these two. But with all of that said, we are ready. I will show you everyone's power as we use them because if not, we're going to be here for a while. Look at all this stuff. Um, but that's it. We have everything. We've got our D20 ready to go. Let's go to gameplay. Okay, so we're going to start with Tarek just because he's on my left. And there's a really handy uh, card that lets you know how a turn goes. If you've seen some of our, my run-throughs before, you know the card well, but let's take a look at it once again and let's get going. So this is a sequence of play. We're going to do uh, three phases in order, hero phase, exploration, and then villain phase. For the hero phase, the first thing that happens is if you have zero hit points, then you use a healing search, but we have just started the game, so we are good. And then perform one of the following actions. You can either move and then make an attack, attack and then move or make two moves and then we're going to flip this so we can go to the exploration phase and the villain phase okay so basically there are no monsters to attack so for our first turn uh Tarek is just going to make two moves um the his move he has a speed of six so he can move up to six squares and he has a, an ability a brutal recovery ability when you or any hero on your tile rolls a natural 20 you may recharge flip over furious assault so i want to use furious assault as soon as i can in case someone rolls a d20 and we can use it again um, but for now uh, all i care about is that he is going to be moving six it's important to notice his ac is 14 and he has an hp of eight to start with ac is the number that the monsters need to roll in order to hit him the speed of six we can pretty much go anywhere we want to um it really doesn't matter what i'm trying to do is keep the map kind of controlled um but let's just go one two and i know he has the speed of six and he can move twice 
which means he is not going to be moving the four that he has left or the other six. So it's 10 squares that he's not going to move because he doesn't need to. He's just going to stand there and end his turn. There's nothing for him to attack. So uh, technically he did two moves. Now we move on to the next phase. The next phase uh, takes us to the exploration phase, where number one, if your hero occupies a square adjacent to an unexplored edge, which he does, go to step two. So we're going to go to the step two. Draw a dungeon tile and place it with its triangle adjacent to the unexplored edge. So we're going to draw a tile. And then we're going to draw a monster card and place that monster on the new tile. So our first tile out of, what is it, eight that we need in order to get to our destination is right here. Okay, looks like it does a little bit of a turn. So we place it. The triangle has to face the tile that we were in. And then we're going to get our first monster. And our first monster needs to be placed on this mushroom stash right here. And we get a goblin cutter. So here's the little fella. We're going to put him on the mushroom stash. He has an AC of 12. That means that we need to roll uh, 12 to be able to hit him. And he only has 1 HP. Okay, so he is going to stand right here on the mushroom stash. And he is my monster. Means that um, he belongs to Tarek. Because Tarek was the one that uh, brought him out. Um, with that, we finished exploration phase. We're going to move to the third and final phase, which is the villain phase. During the villain phase, if you didn't place a tile during your exploration phase, or if you place a tile with a black triangle, we draw an encounter card. However, we drew a tri we did draw a, card, a tile and it has a white triangle, so we're safe. Number two, if a villain is in place, if in play activated, but right now we don't have villains, we will get a villain later on in the adventure because Artemis. The guy that's following us, uh, he's a villain. But then number three, that's the one that we're going to do. Activate each monster and trap that you control in turn in the order you drew them. And then the player to your left goes next. So obviously we only have one monster that we need to worry about. But if there were more monsters, we would go in order. Uh, in the order that we drew them. So the goblin cutter will go first. And then whatever other monster I would have drawn or would, have, would be out of the board that belonged to uh, Tarek would activate. We just have to activate the Goblin Cutter. Let's see how he activates. So to see how he activates, we read the bold part of the card and check if it's you know, appropriate. So for example, if the Goblin Cutter is within one tile of a hero, we know he is because we just placed them one tile away from us. So that is going to happen. So we continue reading. It moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a crude dagger. And for his attack, we look down here. He has a plus seven. So whatever he rolls, we add plus seven. And he's going to be doing one damage to us. Right, so he wants to move uh, adjacent to us. So we'll put him right here. No problem. And then he's going to attack. It's going to be uh, the first attack of the, of the day. He wants to, he, he already has a plus seven. And he's going to be inflicting one damage. What does he need to hit? Well, for Tarek, he needs to hit an AC. His AC is 14. So he already has a plus seven. So all he needs is to roll a seven and he'll hit us. Let's see what he rolls. And he rolled a 10. So he does hit us. That means we're going to be taking our first damage. So uh, Tarek goes down to seven HP. But with that, we are finished with Tarek's turn. And like the card said, now our player to the left is, is going to go. Uh, she's actually to my right, but um, I guess she's also to my left. <laughs> Let's see what Caddy is going to do. So uh, Caddy Bree is actually a ranger, so she likes to attack from far away. She has two at will attacks, but basically we really want to try and keep her uh, at a distance. Let me show you. So she has a, wow, Kazit He attack at roll power. Attack each adjacent monster, then your hero takes one damage. So she has, she can attack adjacent monsters, each of them. So if she's surrounded, yeah, but she's going to take one damage out of the deal. However, her Tolmaril attack says attack one monster within two tiles of your hero. But you cannot attack with this power if your hero is adjacent to a monster. So she either attacks everyone that's adjacent or she attacks people from far away within two tiles and her attack is plus six and one damage. I think today for now we're going to go ahead and attack and then move. So we're going to be using Tolmaril to attack. Before we attack though, we're going to use Falling Hail Stance. 
use at the start of your hero phase, which is right now, we haven't done anything yet, so we are at the start of our hero phase. Place your stance token on this card, which we will place right there. And then while this card has your stance token on it, your hero gains a plur 4 bonus to attack roll. So whatever we roll, we add another 4 to. Hit or miss, you can move the monster you attack one tile in any direction. So this will let us push the monster away if we roll really bad. So I'm going to go ahead and place my stance on the Falling Hail stance because I can do that at the beginning of my turn, which is starting now. Now, uh, I am within two tiles of this monster, one, two, so I can attack it with my Tolmoril attack. Uh, I'm rolling a plus six, plus I get a plus four, so I'm already at ten. The Goblin Cutter is a uh, has an AC of twelve, so I only need to roll a two or higher to get him. So there's... Um, there's not a lot of chances that I'm going to miss. All right, let's see if I can hit this guy. A six. A six will do. So with a six plus my, uh, where is it, my plus six that I, my plus seven actually. No, I'm looking at the wrong person. My Tolmaril uh, is a plus six plus a six that I rolled is 12. That's enough to get to him. But on top of that, I have a plus four because of my stance. So I, it's an overkill. He is gone. And um, I do get a treasure because I defeated a monster and also this monster turns into XP so I'm just gonna keep them here uh, just keep all of my XP it's it's actually a share XP uh, Brie and Tar Tarek yeah Brie and Tarek now I, I gave her a nickname I love it okay so Brie and Tarek share XP and what can you do with XP there's two things that you can do with XP one is that you can level up if you roll a natural 20 uh, during your attack um, you can spend 5 XP to level up. Right now we have 1 because at the bottom of his card it tells you how much experience he gives you. So he right now we are at 1 XP. But if we had 5, we could level up and change from a level 1 fighter to a level 2 uh, hero. So that's one thing that you can do. The other thing that we can do is that we can cancel encounters. Same amount, 5 XP will cancel an encounter once we've looked at it and we say, okay, this encounter, we, we, can't, we can't handle this, we can go ahead and cancel that. But I've attacked, so my next uh, action is going to be to move, because I have attacked, and then move. And how much is her movement? Her movement is, she has a speed of 6. Um, so I can go over here and join my friend. Uh, my only issue is that I'm getting uh, kind of... Uh, but it's okay. I, I don't mind it. I, I see wall and wall, but one, two, three. I'm just gonna stand here. We can go four, five, six to use all the movement. It doesn't matter. And I'm gonna end my turn. We're gonna go to the exploration phase. Okay, so for the exploration phase, first thing we're gonna do is if she's standing on the edge of a tile, which she is, then we will draw a tile and uh, place the arrow facing her. So, okay. It's more walls, but um, <clears throat> I guess it doesn't matter because they're in the same place, so I'm happy with that. And it is a white triangle, so we won't have an encounter, but that's not yet. We uh, reveal a tile and then we get a monster. So what monster are we getting? We're getting a hunting drake. Here's a hunting drake, we're going to place him in the mushroom stash. He has an AC of 14 and an HP of 1. This monster is Breeze, so we'll put him over here. He goes on the mushroom stash, and with that, we are done with the exploration phase. Um, let's see. Uh, Brie actually has an ability during the exploration phase. Her ability, Quick Step, at the end of your exploration phase, which is right now, you can move up to two squares. She's able to move and position herself better for next turn. Before I do that, I was reading her uh, backstory. As the adopted daughter of Brunar, Kathy Bree is fiercely devoted to Clan Battlehammer. So this girl is actually Brunar's dad. And Brunar's the one that sent us in here to get that crown. The plot thickens. Um, so does she want to move? Well, uh, looking at the drake, uh, if the drake is within one tile of the hero, if she doesn't move, she will be uh, during one tile of the hero. So I think she will take advantage and move two squares, one, two, because that will put her away from the drake. And with that said, now we go to the villain phase, where if we have not placed a tile or if we had a black triangle, we would draw an encounter. But we're lucky, again, to know how to deal with an encounter, because encounters are not fun for the most part. 
Um, so uh, next, a villain will act if there's a villain around, but there are no villains, just monsters. And third, but not least, uh, the monsters activate. So let's take a look at what that drake is going to do. Hopefully it's not going to do much because I moved away. So if the hunting drake is within the tile of a hero, we moved, so it doesn't do this anymore. So otherwise the hunting drake moves two tiles towards a hero with the fewest hit points remaining. But no attack. These guys are fast. They move two tiles. So that's one and two. And it'll move uh, next to whatever hero, to, next in the tile of the, the hero with the, has the least amount of hit points remaining, but they're both in the same tile, so he just moves to that tile. He does not attack, he just ran over here, um, and uh, well, uh, sorry Drake, because now it's our turn, and Tarek is gonna go, and well, uh, the Drake just, is just standing there, right next to me, so uh, let's see, can we attack it and then move? We are going to use our at will power distracting jab. You use play, you escape the clutches of your foe as it reacts to your attack. Attack one adjacent monster. If you hit, move the monster one square. After the attack, move your speed. Now if we hit, we're going to kill him. Um, but we can, after the attack, move our speed. So we have a plus seven. Uh, I do believe I forgot to take a treasure when the rogue killed that last monster. Or was it Cathy that killed the last monster? I, I think I am missing a treasure. <laughs> but I'm not going to go back. We'll just live without it. We'll pretend that it you know, wasn't, wasn't worth much. We found boots or something like that. Hopefully I remember this time if I do get to kill the drake. So the drake has an AC of 14. Uh, I'm rolling a plus 7, so I need to get a 7 or more to be able to, well, hit him and defeat him because he only has 1 HP. Let's see how good I can roll. Alright, Tarek, we need a 7. We got a 17. That will do it. So with that, the monster is defeated out of the game. Uh, I mean, for now, <laughs> maybe we get another hunting drake back. Where is it? It's right here. So it gives us another one XP. We'll put him over there. I do get a treasure this time. I will remember my treasure. Let's see what I get. I get a wand of magic missiles. The simple ebony wand casts the most basic spell in the typical wizard's arsenal. Use instead of attacking. Choose one monster within three tiles of your hero. That monster takes one damage. Okay, we'll keep it around. And remember, after the attack, Tarek can move his speed, which is, what, six? So uh, we'll go through this. One, two, three, four. We'll go right here. Now, that's just after the attack. He can move again, but um, I don't think he needs to. I think he's going to end his movement there. One, two, you know what? Uh... She can attack monsters that are within two tiles of her, one, two. So the monster that comes out here, she wouldn't be able to attack. So with that in mind, instead of moving that way, uh, one, two. We're going to move, yeah. One, two. Whoops. Don't, don't, don't fall. Don't fall, my friend. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. That's, I think that's better. And that's, um, that's his speed. Now he can move again, like I said, but he doesn't need to. He's going to stand right there. And he's going to end his turn. He attacked and then moved. We're going to go to the exploration phase. The first thing we do is if he, uh, our hero is on the edge of a tile of, uh, that doesn't have a wall, obviously, then we get another tile. And what do we get? Oh, our first encounter is coming. So first we put it uh, facing our hero. And then we're going to get a monster for Tarek. The monster is a water elemental. So this guy is a little bit harder to hit. He is a 12 AC, but he has 2 HP. So Tarek takes that monster, and we are going to place him on the stash. And of course, that's the end of the exploration phase. He doesn't have a cool ability to move at the end of his exploration phase. Um, he does have that cool ability of uh, flipping one of his cards if, he gets a, if someone rolls a 20, but um, we haven't even used the card yet because we haven't needed to. Everybody so far has been 1 HP. This is our first monster that takes 2 HP to defeat. Um, in the meantime, we're going to go to the villain phase. Uh, villain phase, if we did not place a tile or if we place a tile with a black triangle, we draw an encounter card. So this time we are going to get an encounter and we're going to get volcanic spray. So this is an event. Spouting lava burns your flesh. Each hero within one tile of a volcanic vent tile takes one damage. However, we don't have any volcanic vent tiles yet out on the battlefield. We'll discard this after playing. It had no effect because luckily 
uh, we still have no volcanic vents. I'm sure we'll, we'll see them there in there somewhere. Um, but our encounter wasn't so bad, not, not this time. Uh, after that, number two in the phase, in the villain phase, is that any villains will activate. We don't have any villains. And then number three, our monster is going to activate any monster that Tarek controls, which is the water elemental that we just drew. So if the water ele elemental is adjacent to a hero, it is not. So we move on. If the water elemental is, is, is within one tile of a hero, that it is, we just place them one tile away, it moves to the closest hero's tile and attacks each hero on that tile with a surging wave. So it's going to attack us with the wave, which is a plus eight and one damage. And notice that if we defeat this guy, it gives us two XP instead of just one. So the monster is within one tile of us, so it's going to move to the hero's tile and stand on the stash and then attack everyone, every hero on that tile, which is just Tarek, with a plus eight, it's a wave. Let's see if he can survive the wave. All right, can Tarek swim? Okay, the monster got a two. It looks like Tarek can swim. Let's check it out. So the monster rolled a two. His attack is a plus eight, so two plus eight puts him at 10, but Tarek takes 14 A and C, so he needed to, to roll four more. Um, so he actually misses, so not bad. Um, and with that, we've activated every monster, which is just that one. So we go back to Bree, and Bree is going to, I think, attack that monster. Now remember, this monster takes 2 HP, so before she attacks at the start of her turn, she's going to use another one of her stances. This is the Heart Seeker stance. Your arrows dig deeper into your opponent's flesh. Use at the start of your hero phase, place your stance token on this card. While this card has your stance token on it, your attack deal plus one damage on a hit. And that's what we need. We need to be uh, attacking for two hits to defeat the water elemental. However, that means that we have to take the stance off of the flailing, the falling hail stance, which means that we're going to lose our plus four bonus. So it's going to be a little harder to hit, but if we hit, then we hit harder. Okay, so I'm going to take my stance from the falling hail stance and put it on the heart seeker stance. And with that done, then I'm going to declare that I'm going to attack first and then move. Uh, I am uh, within two tiles of this hero. I am actually within one tile of the hero, so it's within two tiles. So I'm going to, again, use my Tolmonbril attack, which if you remember is a plus six. I cannot attack adjacent monsters, but I can attack monsters within two tiles of me. Uh, so let's see, with a plus six, I should be hitting two. Uh, what is the AC I need to get? I need to get a 12, so I need to roll a six or better. Let's see if I can do it. I got a 13, so yeah, that will, that will do it. So far, so good. The monsters have not been such a big threat that stands. It's actually helping me give the, the monster the extra damage that it needs to be defeated. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put it as XP, which means that we are at 2, 3, 4 XP right now. Almost ready to level up if we roll a 20. Uh, this guy's going bye-bye. And uh, I also get a treasure for defeating the monster. And I gotta point out that no matter how many monsters you defeat on a turn, uh, if I defeat three monsters using that, that attack that lets me defeat uh, or, or attack anything that's adjacent to me, if I defeat three monsters, five monsters, six monsters, I only get one treasure per turn uh, when I defeat a monster during my turn. But I've defeated one monster, so what treasure do I get? I get Fortune, Moments, Respite. This is a play immediately, so let's do it. The tunnels are quiet for now, and we have to play it immediately. Place this card face up on top of either the encounter deck or the monster deck. The next time a card will be drawn from the chosen deck, discard this card instead. Okay, so we have a choice. We can kind of have the monsters uh, delayed or the encounters delayed. And I think, I don't mind the monsters. I've been, been able to defeat them. They give me XP. The encounters really give me nothing but trouble. Um, so I wouldn't mind holding off on encounters for a bit. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna play like that and uh, that's the end of her turn now we go to the ex actually she hasn't moved she attacked from within one tile but she still has to move she has a speed of six uh, one two three four five six yeah she wants to one two three four five six I want to move as far as possible opening uh, space over here uh, alright so that's the end of her turn at the end of her turn we go to exploration phase if she's at the edge of a tile, which she is, we're going to, oh, there's that volcanic vent, remember? Okay, so, so for now on, we have to be careful with the volcanic vent. And um, we also get a monster, 
The new monster is a drow duelist. This guy is a little harder to be able to hit him. He only has 1 HP, but it takes 16 to actually uh, give him a hit. So I'm going to place him over here to remember that he's my monster. Place him over there in the uh, mus mushroom stash. And uh, that's the end of the exploration phase. Now remember, at the end of the exploration phase, uh, Bree has a special ability that she can move two squares at the end of the exploration phase, so she will. Uh, one, two, call me a coward, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, and uh, with that, we finish exploration. We go to villain phase. During the villain phase, if uh, we have a black triangle or no tile, we will uh, draw an encounter. However, we are not going to be drawing an encounter because we have a moment's respite in play. So instead of drawing an encounter, we just discard this. So it helped already. It was pretty quick. Um, and after that, then we're going to go ahead and... Um, well, if there was any villains, they would activate now. I keep telling you that. Um, but then we move to number three, which is activate the monsters that uh, Bree controls, which is the Drow Duelist. So what does he do? If the Drow Duelist is within one tile of a hero, he is not, because Bree moved away. So otherwise, the Drow Duelist moves one tile towards the closest hero. So all the Duelist is doing is just moving one tile up, uh, making it a little easier for our friend uh, Tarek to hit. And with that, we've done all the monsters, so we're going to go back to Tarek's turn, or, or we're going to Tarek's turn next, and he is not going to attack and then move, I don't think so, although he does have, let's see, he's going to attack, and then he's going to move. I want to show you as much as I can uh, of what's in the game and all the powers that uh, all these guys can do. So we're going to use a positioning shot. Attack one monster within two tiles of you. Hit or miss, place that monster on any square on your tile or an adjacent tile. This is a plus seven. Remember, we need to hit a 16, which is a little harder than we're used to. Let's see if Tarek can do it. Okay, Tarek. Can you do it? Oh, Tarek rolled a 1, so he definitely missed. Yeah, 1 plus uh, 7, that's 8. Uh, I thought about using my Wand of Magic Missiles because he's a little harder to hit. I thought about just getting rid of him, um, but I wanted to show you the range attack, <laughs> so it's okay. Um, now I can place um, the what's-his-name uh, in my tile or in an adjacent uh, tile. So I could leave him there or I could move him. I think I'm gonna move him over here um, because I don't want to have all the monsters. <laughs> you know, over there at least he's a little far away. I'm gonna move, she's gonna move. He needs to be within a tile. If not, all he does is move. Um, so I'm just going to, we don't have two monsters now roaming around because this guy's gonna move and explore um, and I'm going to move my speed one. I want to kind of go this way. Two, three, four. Yeah, I want to go this way. Uh, move all the map. Here we go. So we can we have room for our next tile. That's the end of his turn. He attacked, missed, and then he moved. And now he at the end of his turn we go to exploration. He is at the edge of a tile, so we are going to get uh, another tile with an encounter. Look at that. Okay, so. All right, and we get a monster. So our next monster is another drake. You've seen the drake before. Let's just place him on the mushroom stash. Okay, here's our little, I call him a little dinosaur. Um, and then um, that's the end of the exploration phase. At the end of the exploration phase, maybe we go to the villain phase, where because we have a black triangle, we're going to get an encounter. And we draw an event, attack. And it says, attack each hero on your hero's tile. A careless step causes a mass of fungus to expel a cloud of poisonous spores. We're going to do a plus 11, and we get poisoned. We don't get damaged, but we do get poisoned. So let's roll. Okay, so it's 11 plus 7, that's 18. I do think that we get poisoned. Yeah, 18 definitely gets us. We are only at 14. So this card gets uh, discarded, telling you encounters are no bueno. And then we're going to be poisoned. Here's our poison status. You take one damage at the start of your hero phase. Discard this marker at the end of your hero phase if you roll 10 plus. Okay, so we've been poisoned. I'll just keep it here to remember. And um, that's not all. That was just the encounter. Next up, the villains will act. There's still no villains around. Hopefully soon, which we're getting closer. And after that, all the monsters activate. So we're going to activate Mr. Drake over here. What is he going to do? 
If the hunting drake is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a rending bite. Okay, so it's going, it is within one tile of us. So it moves adjacent to the hero and plus eight, one damage. All right, so we're going to move him adjacent to us. Um, we can even leave him over here. Uh, sure. And uh, then it's going to roll a plus eight. He needs to hit a 14. Let's see how he does. 8 plus 2, okay, that's just 10. He misses. I'm happy to see that the monsters roll just as bad as I do with my roll of 1. <laughs> but with that, we've activated all the monsters that Tarek controls. So we go back to Bree. Now, uh, Bree knows that the Drow Duelist is going to be um, moving this turn because it's the monster that she controls. Uh, the Drake, not yet. Uh, I guess this guy still has a chance to kill him before he acts again. But we need to take care of this of this duelist. And also we need to think about do we want to explore or do we want to halt a little bit and not get any more monsters. Now we have, let's see, this is the start tile. So we've revealed one, two, three, four, five tiles. So we know we still are not getting uh, close to the broken door. We still have at least three more tiles to, to go through. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and challenge the dual uh, the, what is it called? Drow Duelist. Before I do that, I'm going to change my stance again. Right now, my stance is at my Heartseeker uh, card ability, which gives me plus one damage. But I don't need to do plus one damage. He only takes one HP to be defeated. However, my Falling Hail stance gives me a, four, a plus four bonus to attack roll. So whatever I roll, I, I add four to. And he's a 16, so any little bit of help is appreciated. So I'm going to go ahead and move my stance to my Falling Hail giving me that plus four, and then I'm going to, uh, I, I don't want to attack anything adjacent to me, I'm not going to move, I'm going to attack first, and then move, so I'm going to use my Tolmoreal again, so plus six, uh, mon uh, monsters that are within two tiles, he is within one tile of me, so I could do that, it's a plus six, so I have plus six, plus my plus four uh, from my uh, stance, I am already at ten, I still need to roll six or better to get him, okay, and I got a 14, that's good enough. So with that said, this guy is gone. We get his card as XP. And at least I know that uh, if any, I'm just gonna have one monster moving and attacking this turn if I do explore. I do get a treasure for my troubles. What do I get? I get a cure potion. This heavy flask is filled with a dark liquid that tastes like fine elven wine. Use during your hero phase. Your hero or an adjacent hero regains one hit point and ends one condition on him or her, and then discard it. Well, my friend has a condition, and I haven't moved, so that means that if I move adjacent to him, I can cure him. I can cure his potion. So uh, I can give him the cure potion and, and, and or use it on him and get rid of the condition, plus heal him, which he's taking one damage, so he will be back to full health. I think with that in mind, then things plans have changed a little bit, and we're going to do that. So I'm going to move my speed, which is uh, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I am next to him. So because it's still my turn, I'm going to use my Cure Potion and get rid of that poison so that he doesn't take that one damage at the beginning of his turn. He doesn't have to roll and get rid of the potion, like the poison like that. Plus he regains one health. Okay, so here's his health back, He's back up to full health at 8, and um, with that I'm going to say that I'm ending my turn, uh, at the end of my turn, if I am next to uh, the edge of a tile, we'll get another one, so I'm going to get another monster, uh, and another encounter apparently, okay, here we go, and uh, we get a monster, what monster is it? It is another draw. Oh, it's a draw wizard. Okay. All right. So here's our draw wizard with another big AC. AC of 16 plus an HP of 2. So this is this guy's going to be a pain. Okay. And uh, the draw wizard goes right there on the mushroom stash. And with that, we've ended uh, the phase. Now, uh, remember, uh, I can, uh, at the end of the exploration phase, I can move two squares. And uh, I, I think I want to because I know this guy is going to move to the tile with the most heroes and attack everybody. And right now, if I stay where I'm at, he would attack both heroes. And I want to try and at least prevent uh, some of that damage. So I will move to, I got to get out of that tile. 
and if I go here I won't be able to if I go here I, I will be able to or I can move through my friend one two and then my turn there and stand next to the dino I mean I don't I don't know that it, that it matters um, maybe just in case I should go towards the wizard um, let's see okay uh, I'm going to move this way to that tile um, because that way the drake won't attack me and because I don't mind if Tarek takes a little bit of hits he's back to full health so that's fine with me um, so I'm gonna leave it there so that's the end of my exploration phase now we go to the villain phase in which because we have a black triangle we couldn't get an encounter and we found a spell web a snare of webs holds lol's foes attack each hero on your hero's tile and we're gonna get plus eight and immobilized so no damage but we would be immobilized at a plus eight let's see how the monsters roll cat Bree is a 15 so a plus 8 is 16 so she does get immobilized here's the immobilized token you cannot move discard this condition at the end of your hero phase so next turn she won't be able to move okay we'll place that over here to remember that she's immobilized um, but that was the end of that encounter so we move on to number two villains will activate There's still no villains no monsters will activate and it's the draw wizard's turn to activate what does he do the draw wizard teleports to the tile with the most heroes, then attacks each hero on that tile with a blast of fire. And even if he misses, he's going to be doing one damage. It's a plus eight. So that's kind of why I moved away. I didn't want to be in the tile with the most heroes. Now there's two tiles with the same amount of heroes, so I get to pick. And of course, I want to pick the one with um, the toughest guy right now. Um, so I'm going to put him there, and we're going to attack Tarek at a plus eight. He's going to take one damage regardless because even if he misses it's one damage he needs to uh, hit a 14 ac let's see how he rolls and it's a 10 so yeah 10 uh will do it so it's 10 plus the 8 that he has as a modifier that's 18 that's more than enough to give uh tarek two hits so he's back down to six hp ouch i think instead of taking that damage we're going to use tumbling escape Use this power when a monster hits you with an attack. The attack misses. Place your hero on any tile within one tile of where you started. So pretty much he just escaped. Now this is a utility power and if you look at the bottom it says flip this card over after you use the power. So we won't be able to use this again unless we find a power that lets us unflip this one. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and flip over my tumbling escape to indicate that I won't be able to use it again and I get to move is it one one tile I believe uh, place your hero on any tile within one tile of where you started so within one tile I'm just gonna go over here with my friend why not um, here next to her sure <laughs> okay and with that then I escaped that attack um, that's the only monster we need to activate so we are done with uh, Bree's full turn and villain phase, all the phases, we go back to Tarek, who's going to try and take revenge on uh, this uh, wizard. Okay, guys, join us next time if you want to see how this uh, game concludes. Remember to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and also subscribe to the channel. We'll be playing more Legend of Dreads next time. See you then.